Hey everybody, Chris from CodePen here, and Shaw's with me today too. Hey Shaw. Hello. Hey, we're going to show you how collab mode works on CodePen. It's a pro feature that works, lets you work on pens in real time together. People use it for, sometimes they're just coworkers using it. I mean, Shaw and I use it all the time for that kind of thing. Like, let's work together on this little idea and figure it out. People also use it for hiring. You know, you put your hiree in a collab mode and you get to watch them code and think and stuff. It's kind of cool. But for any reason, you need to work together with one person or multiple people, try collab mode. It's cool for that. So I'm going to kick off a brand new pen here, totally empty. And I can type, you know, hello world in here and see it. It just works like how code pen works. But if I want to work with Sean and I'm going to save this pen, then go to the change view drop down and pick collab mode. Now that will be there if you're pro. Notice there's a subtle little kind of yellow orange bar at the top here, uh, kind of indicating that you're in a new view. I'm gonna you know, off screen here, send this to Shaw over Slack so he can open it up. And I can I can verify I've never seen this link before. <laughs> a new hey, well, look at that, hello like, world. Yeah, and I can see that he's popped in here in the, in the footer. So pretty cool. Um, Shaw is typing at the same time. You can see that uh, this thing has given him pink as a color and his cursor is pink. I can see where he's typing and work together. So really cool, kind of powerful thing that way. Now, what we're going to build together is going to be fun too. We're going to look at kind of like a CSS trick <laughs> that we discovered together because we needed it the other day. So let's work together on it. I'll make some HTML and then I'll pass it over to Shaw to work on some other things. So while he's doing some CSS stuff there, I can be scaffolding out some HTML too. What we're going to do is build a toggleable list. So I'm going to give ourselves a button that does that toggle button. Um, and inside that button, I'm going to say toggle list. That's the job of this button. And I'm going to say the UL has an ID of um, list on it in case we need to target it in JavaScript. And I'm just going to give myself like 10 list items. And maybe um, the content will be uh, 1 through 10 of those. So um, if I managed to break some HTML or something. Oh, there it caught up. All good. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just we're going to open and close this list, but we're going to do it with animation as we do it. So that's kind of going to be the point. And we're going to see something that's a little awkward with it. For one thing, <laughs> the height of how tall one through ten in is a little unknown. It's just as tall as it is right now. That's how HTML works. This UL is just that's how tall it is. Just is that tall. If we add more list items to it, you know, I'll hit, you know, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. It'll just be taller. It'll just push itself taller. We didn't have to tell it to be that tall. It just is that tall. So if we want to animate it down to zero, well, animate it from what? <laughs> it, it doesn't know. Or if you want to animate it back to its natural position, how high is that? I don't know. It makes animation a little tricky, but there is a trick to do it. And one of the things you can do with it is animate the max height of it and just make sure that that max height is probably higher than its natural height. You know, uh, there's probably more to say about that, but I think you'll understand it more in a minute. So we got our button and we got our list. Now what, Shaw? Let's maybe we'll do some. Okay. I'm yeah, with, without without really, uh, it, there, there's not really a pure CSS way to handle like the toggling unless you're doing like the checkbox kind of hack. So we will need a little bit of JavaScript here in the JS panel. Um, we've got our button, um, and we can do uh, just an event listener yeah, for so the you click. click the button. And it's got to toggle something that ultimately our CSS could use. Now we could have JavaScript do the animation as well, but I think I don't know. I'm kind of a CSS kind of person. I'd rather uh, have the have the lower level technology handle this kind of thing. So we're thinking of that list. We'll probably have some kind of state that's either open or closed. And in this case, it looks like Shaw's going to use the aria expanded attribute on the button. Um, yeah, the button itself is what needs to be um, true or false, right? Like if you like right, that, that's what that's what. Um the recommendation is there, that aria expanded value. Yeah, and we um, use that on CodePen itself. Look at this user menu that I'm about to click open. It's the, 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 the avatar of me is a button. And when the, when it's, uh, the menu is open, it gets aria expanded 
true on it and when the menu is closed it's closed so it's the button itself but do we need something on the list i guess we could use a, a child combinator kind of thing uh yeah uh we could we could do that but we can also uh target the list and use uh data attributes yeah i kind of um, like the explicit the nature of changing something on the list itself rather than saying like hey if this list follows a button that has this class it's just a little Ugh. what if someone yeah. put a span in there it would break it kind of um, so you're going to target the list with its ID, and then right. you're going to do something to the list when the list is toggled as well, yeah? Right. Uh, so we'll, we'll track the open state here um, by looking if, if the ARIA expanded has already been done, and then we'll invert it um, on the attribute there. And then our list, we can do data set open equals. There we go. Uh, and this way, it'll it'll toggle the toggle that back and forth, or should. Um, if you click the button, it should. Yeah, it turn turns red. red once and then off from red, but then won't go back. What's up with that? Is it just yeah, red? interesting. Um, so you're trying to make open is essentially like the state, right? Right. So oh, let's go. see. I, I think because it's yeah, that's how yeah it that that works now. So the the attribute itself is the string true. So just the existence of that attribute doesn't um, doesn't mean that. Um, it's yeah, it has to be false. You have to you have to say what you mean, which right it doesn't uh, that doesn't bother me. And then it looks like you're using uh, the data set, which is like a native JavaScript API for. For that, does it actually change the attribute in the DOM? As it, well? it does. Uh, so you can you can do it in the in the same way with like get or set attribute and then do uh, data open. These are the same thing, uh, but data set is a convenient um, JavaScript uh, API for accessing those data attributes. Um, so now, if we do ID list data open. Um, Okay. Then we I should was trying be able to look to... at the DOM, but it's funny when you when you're in collab mode when you're editing the JavaScript, it's like refreshing, so it's hard to look at the DOM. You know, it's just kind yeah. of a funny thing to know. Uh, yeah, uh, one one trick I do for that um, in like the change view menu, um, you can open up the debug mode in a different window, oh, yeah. and that'll that'll be locked into like the last saved version, so that you can kind of inspect something while while somebody else is working. It's working, yeah, that's nice. And I know you've used the run button before too. If we went into the behavior and turned off the auto updating preview it would stop that as well but then it's like yeah. then you have to hit the run button every time so it's kind of a it's kind of a whatever you like you know there's yeah. options um okay so so the list itself isn't actually doing any toggling yet although it is turning red and not red so i see yeah um, that's this css happening and that's the list and then the list while it's open so that's pretty right. clear that's pretty clear now uh, let me let me try take a crack at this so if, if the list in its natural state is closed i could say max height zero right and then it's just going to go away well it didn't because um it collapsed but the overflow wasn't hidden so let me set the overflow to hidden and then that list should go away although there might be some padding on it right that um, makes it still take up a little bit of space. Well, yeah, I got box sighting border box on there. I wonder why it's doing that. Uh, so list good. has margin yeah. and padding on there. Um, so you'll need to override those uh, just, to make just sure the browser totally default styles away. for those. Well, yeah. And then when the list is open, I could say something like max height. And we'll just pick a height that's like, I don't know, taller than it needs to be. <laughs> so I think if I toggle this now, should that work? Is the data... There it goes. Yeah, see, it's toggling, but it's not it's not animating. Um, so how would I animate it? Well, that's real easy, isn't it? I could um, add transition, and if I was shot, I'd probably pick a cool cubic bezier or something, but I'll just put 0 0.2 seconds on it, which does a default kind of easing deal. Uh, whoop, 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 yeah, whoop, whoop, whoop. it's already 90% of the way there. It's 90% of the way there. I'd say that's, that's true. Um, the problem we're trying to solve is that uh, it <laughs> when it's, let, let's say, 25% of the way there during the animation, and I can make it slower, right? Let me make it like one second. Well, so you, you have overflow hidden, um, it, but we, we do want to set overflow auto when it's open in case there's, you know, if we yeah. double the list items here. Um, we we want those other list items to yeah. be Overflow available. Overflow hidden is dangerous. Uh, they call that data loss in CSS. It means that if if it's hiding something that 
overflows the container, there's literally no way to get to it. You need that scrolling behavior there, which is what overflow auto is doing, in order to make sure that you don't have data loss. So you're right, it has to have overflow auto when it's open. The thing is, it's open the second you flip that button. So the second you flip that button, it's got scroll bars. So let's look at the behavior now. Oh, scroll bar, scroll bar, scroll bar. The second you do that, it's got a scroll bar. And it's like, what if it doesn't even need a scroll bar at the end? So that's right. With our current max height, if we just have 10 items, there won't be a scroll bar at the end if I, if I take those extra items off. Yeah, I'm gonna open so you it. get the scroll bar and then it pops away. But it's got the scroll bar as it's opening, which yeah. I think UI wise is a little like mm, not great. So fine. If it needs a scroll bar at the end, could we do this? Could we use CSS only to say, just put the scroll bar in at the end, but not during the animation. It feels so janky during the animation. And it's, it's especially nice when it's, if it's open and it doesn't need the scroll bar, then you would never see the scroll bar at all, which is really exactly. ideal. So this to me, CSS wise, is not particularly intuitive. Although I think the, the Shaw's kind of final answer here is actually more intuitive than I thought it was going to be. So the idea is, you know, like in my mind, it's like, how can we say, just don't have a scroll bar while you're animating. Uh, yeah, and that's so transition is kind of a, an immediate thing. Whenever whenever something uh, changes the the uh, properties of an element, so in this case, our data open yeah. uh, true is toggling overflow auto and max height. You probably want that to just be uh, max height. Um, you know, we can't really transition overflow there anyway, but. Uh, we, we've specified that the max height should transition, uh, and so the, the browser's doing that. Uh, but the way we can kind of override those values uh, in, in just like a very temporary way is actually by using animation. Um, so okay. let's say I'll, I'll animation, see. hide, scroll. Nice, okay. And so then well we'll use the same duration for now. Um, and we'll wanna apply that backwards. Um, should be okay to um, leave that off, to, but if we have a delay or something like that, we'll we'll want that uh, that backwards in there. And then uh, for the keyframes, we're in SCSS, so I just I, I like adding the keyframes right next to where the animation yeah, is the um, with nesting and all that. that just it makes it easier for me to mentally. follow. Um, we can do from to overflow hidden. Yeah. So during the entire course of this animation. Um, we're applying the property overflow hidden. Um, and then when the animation ends, it will, uh, it will just end up with, um, with the final uh, state is of, of really? the animation That's there. Interesting. Is that, uh, does that if, what backwards if, is doing? If we did both, it would override. Uh, but since we're doing backwards here, it will, it will uh, just uh, remove that property at and the end of the animation. if we did forwards there too, it would stay hidden too, wouldn't it? Uh, well, right. If we did, if we did forwards, it's going to uh, leave overflow hidden on there yeah, uh, at the end of the animation, want, we want which is not what we want. Right. Um, so we just want it backwards, just in case there's a, a need for a delay or that's something funny, like that's that. That's intuitive to me. Um, you think with from here, then it would it would be like, well, I'll use the from value. I don't know. Whatever. I give it. It's just it's just <laughs> funny in the mind. Okay. So now, if I open this. Um, no scroll bar until the end, which is totally what we want. And I know you could scrutinize this for having a little jumpiness that you can see on my screen. Like it's like once the scroll bar pops in there, um, they shift a little bit. Eh, you know, not that big of a deal. Now that's only because I have the setting on my computer to say that show scroll bars all the time. Even the Mac OS default is to is to not do that, which then has these special kind of scroll bars that just kind of overlay over the area too. If we had styled scroll bars, we could minimize that. There's all kinds of like caveats here, but I think we got the core experience right. And now it looks like Shaw has changed the max height to be taller than is needed. So now we don't see any scroll bar at all when this opens. It's a very right. nice toggling experience. Um, right. But if you if you had some kind of limitation, you know, like if you were doing viewport units or something like that and it was conditional or the number of items ends up changing later, yeah. then the user can still access them. You're not you're not hiding those away. Right. But in the ideal experience, you know, you're not getting those those scroll bars 
uh, right. unless it's absolutely and I can necessary. Even, let me just open a new tab here. Like, whoa, we played around with this. Be, it was this literally in the code pen experience. This, this is what we do. The from template drop down um, in the pen drop down. Use that same exact model, although we. We changed it to be a little faster. We have no animation on the way back up just for snappiness and stuff. Um, but this is a, literally exactly what we're doing. We're not using some fancy React thing. We're not using a animation library. We're not using the, what, you know, the native web animation API. It's just toggling a class and using a little max height. And you can get it pretty dang smooth with that. So, uh, so that's that. And notice we were able to work on this together and be really efficient and talk through things together in collab mode, which is cool. It looks like the colors Shaw probably grabbed from from the, 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 the assets in the asset manager here or the, the assets pop up view. And we're just like kind of using a lot of code pen here. Yeah, we could have even. Yeah, and it it's it's great to be able to you know work on the same thing and work in different areas or talk through a problem together in the in the same area. You know, it really just uh, helps uh, cut through a lot of the back and forth that you might get in like a you know a pull request or like just sending a demo to somebody. Uh, just talking through it together really really helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't mind us if we tell you it's super useful. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. See you next time, everybody. Bye.